Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we will be painting the Fortress Dropship from Ironwind Metals to go for our games of Battletech. So let's go and get started. To paint my Fortress Dropship, I'm going to use some Iron Rack Skin, Abaddon Black, Contrast Space Wolves Gray, Pallid Witch Flesh, Army Painter Shining Silver, The Fang, Mechanicus Standard Gray, Nuln Oil, Mephiston Red, and some Altdorf Guard Blue. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, finished priming up our Fortress Dropship. So this guy actually took three coats of primer to get like a smooth gray color on it. Started with uh, Krypton, Cry I'm sorry, Krylon gray primer. And then I finished it off with some Army gray. Uh, give it a smoother coat there. Since I've got such a wide bit of acreage, I'm gonna paint it using my big junk brush. Now something I should point out, everything from here down, I'm gonna pick a different color than here up. And so if you ever looked at the old uh, space shuttle, you'll notice that certain tiles were white, certain tiles were black. And those are actually different types of tiles. The black areas are normally go a higher intensity heat load than the white areas because you've got to imagine a drop ship re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. It's going to take a little bit more than a titanium ceramic matrix composite can take. I'm going to use some iron arc skin here as I lecture you about material science. But if you want to do something like real you know, Mach 24 re-entry of the Earth's surface, you know, like a planetary body, you're talking, you know, three, 4,000 degrees Kelvin, you're going to need ceramics, or ultra-high temperature ceramics. So something like a hafnium diboride, or a zirconium diboride part here. So as, even though this is a base, you can see that it's coming on kind of choppy. And I watered this down a little bit. I want to get it down into all these grooves. I'm going to be at this for a while. So this is going to take probably two coats to get it to consistency of coverage that I'm happy with. Not worried about the brush strokes right now. We'll take care of that at a later stage. All right, now we're going to go all around the model and get it painted this dull white. So we finished putting on two coats of iron rack skin. It still looks a little patchy around the white areas, but that's all right. Now I want to work on the bottom side of the craft. Basically, this would be the part that goes through re-entry. So I'm going to use some Abaddon Black, just like the old space shuttle. And as this is a heat shield, it's going to be made out of a different tile. Take the brush down there far enough. Okay. Now I'm just going to use a sloppy brush. And just push it in. Now I don't have to worry about details at this point until I get close to the line. So we'll go all the way around in the bottom here and a little booster. And then we'll go back. For the next step, I'm going to work on the white hull here. And you can see it's kind of patchy how the paint smooths on there. And the way I tackle that is I'm actually going to use some contrast paint. 
So this is contrast space wolves gray. I like that it is a gray but with just a hint of blue. Now I am not going to slop and gloop on this color here. I am going to take my wet and brush, my wet brush there, put a little bit on, and I'm going to dip and swirl it in my little pot of water, and that will thin this stuff down to like between a wash and the contrast glaze. So we're just lightly tinting it. We'll go all the way around. So our contrast paint has dried, and you can see we've got some big runny streaks here all over. But we can see that we buried the white underneath the contrast paint. Now I really just wanted it in these grooves here, and to like create some texture on the outside. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take some iron rack skin, so an off white. And I'm going to take my Citadel small paintbrush. I just want a little bit of paint on there. I'm going to rub some of it off. And what we're going to do is start stippling it on. So you can see the gloppiness from the contrast paint around the edge of the tiles. I'm using that to represent the effect of um, burn up on the thermal protection system around the leading edges here, which would, you know, affect the tiles more than, you know, the flat acreage in the center of the edges. And so what we're going to do is we'll just layer on and so what I'm doing is this area is without a lot of the contrast and these sharp edges with a lot of contrast, we use the iron rack skin to blend them together. You know, just design it to taste, and this can be a quick process or a slow, painful process. But considering how much this model co cost, going to be a centerpiece on my board, so I'm going to make it look nice. That shows you the kind of effect I'm looking for. Make it look like this pot has been through the atmosphere a couple times. Alright, so now what we're going to do is go around and do all these tiles that way. And that should be fun. Now you can see I've got my hull all textured with the paint there. Now I'm going to move on to some Pallid Witch Flush. Then I'm going to switch to my Army Painter brush. Now I only want a very little bit of this. So I put that on the brush. There's some paper off screen. So it's going to add a slight tint of white, pretty much just catching the edges of the tiles, and then we'll dust it a little bit through there. So 
So you can see this is the iron rack, and that's with the white. If you want to make it look shinier, you can put like streets in it. And this will help lighten up the model. And I always run my hand at the same angle and just spin the model around. Now on the turrets, I'm going to just catch the edges there. All right, now I'll just keep going around the model here. I've got the white on, and you can see running it all at this 45 degree angle, just spin it around, and that catches and runs little light streaks down, so it kind of looks like the light is dappling off the surface. For now, let's do some detail work. I'm going to take some Army Painter Shining Silver. I've got it in my palette here, and I'm going to do all the gun barrels. part I also want to get to is on the landing struts, so down here, I didn't even see that at all. The thing I want to do is the landing struts, paint those metal. And at this point we want to be really careful with the paint. There's a lot of barrels on this thing. So go around and do those. Now I want to start doing the same thing I did with the white with the black down here. So I'm going to use some um, the fang. So it's a dark blue gray. And I'm going to take my Army Painter dry brush. And what I'm going to do is just hit it along the edges. So wherever I see an edge, I'm just going to hit the flat of the brush against that edge. All right, so just run around the model.
did some edge dry brushing on the black. I'm going to top it off with some Mechanicus Standard Gray. And I'm going to put it on less areas than the blue. So just like that. Just where light would come to a point. And go like that, all the way around the model. Now I've got that second layer of gray done. You can see the contrast between the two, just highlighting the panels. Next, I've got all this silver from the weapon ports and the landing struts, and I'm going to put on a liberal dose of Nuln Oil. Let's just uh, turn them down and give them some depth. Now for the little turrets, I'm going to use my little brush. And try not to get it onto the white. And then for the landing struts, I'm just going to take a, one of my messed up brushes and just glob it on there. On the black part, I'm not going to worry about getting it onto the rest of it. But you see, that's holding to the uh, creases and seams there. So we'll go around and do all of those. Alright, so for the final steps, what we're going to do is we have these little protrusions from the top. I'm going to take those as little warning guide lights. So these things are supposed to be huge structures. There will be planes flying around. So obviously those would be like the little lights you see on top of um, towers and such that warn planes not to fly too close. So we're going to take some Mephiston Red first. And I am going to take Every see they come in pairs. So there's three sets of two, and I'm gonna take I don't know the right light, and I'm gonna paint it red. Now for the light on the left, I'm gonna take some Altdorf Guard blue, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Final step before we're done is we're going to take back our pallid witch flush. And what we'll do, just put a little dot. And we'll call it a day. Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time. Now that our paint job's complete, we're ready to get this model on the table and get gaming. Thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.